September is the beginning of the new church year. It's a time when ministers start new appointments, when churches begin to look forward and plan for the year ahead. September is the time of changing seasons, as the long hot days of summer give way to cooler evenings, as the bright colours of our summer garden turn to the rich autumn shades. It's also the start of the school academic year, with children and young people moving schools or going off to college or university. A time of change and transition, often leaving young people feeling vulnerable, apprehensive or uncertain. It's at this time of year, more than any other, when we are encouraged to pray for our schools and colleges for those involved in education at every level. Not all of us are called to be teachers, but we are all called to be students and are told that we never stop learning new and exciting things, both about the world and about God. Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty nine, said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Oxen were yoked together so that the more experienced oxen could show the other the way. So when we are yoked or attached to Jesus, we should allow him to guide us and to teach us the way. Jesus is the ultimate teacher. Of the 90 times in the Bible, where Jesus is directly addressed, 60 times he was called teacher. Nicodemus addressed Jesus as teacher, as did the rich young ruler. This was also the word that the multitudes used. This was how his disciples referred to him. And Jesus himself used the term in John 13, 13, when he said, You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, for that is what I am. When I first began working as a tutor to YTS trainees back in the late 1980s, I looked to Jesus for the best possible role model. The same model I have tried to emulate as a minister for the last 24 years. Jesus set us a wonderful example of how best to teach others. He spoke to them in stories and parables, using language that his listeners could understand and telling stories they could relate to. When training for the ministry, I spent half of my life with a course book in one hand and a dictionary in the other. That's not how Jesus worked. Jesus also encouraged his listeners to push their boundaries, asking Peter to get out of the boat and try to walk on water, telling his disciples that they could do even greater things than he himself did. We all need encouragement to be given confidence to try new things, to take risks. Jesus also taught with authority an authority that had been given to him by the Father. Those in the education system have been given the authority to teach from the local education department they work for. Ministers preach and teach under the authority of the church. We do not speak on our own authority, but under the authority that has been given to us. Although Jesus' class sizes were often quite large, it's recorded there were in excess of 4,000 people on some occasions. He also knew the importance of small groups with 12 disciples and an inner circle of four with whom he spent quality time sharing and teaching on a deeper level. When I was in school, there were 35 to 45 people in each class. And the hard work teachers didn't have any time to spend with individual students. So if you struggled in a subject, you got left behind. 
there was little space for questions. When I was doing my A-levels, a few of us volunteered to work on a one-to-one -one basis with younger pupils in the school who were struggling. This worked wonderfully. It gave them a chance to ask questions. It helped them to gain confidence. In the church, we need to remember this. There is a place for large gatherings where preaching and teaching can be to vast crowds, but only if there's also small groups. Bible study, fellowship or discipleship groups of no more than a dozen, and also accountability groups of three or four who meet to share and pray together. The idea of a mentor Someone you can be yoked with also helps those who are new to a role. So too for young Christians who have a mentor to help them grow in the faith. One of the greatest privileges of my ministry was when I was asked to mentor a new minister. It was also one of the most awesome responsibilities. Jesus' last command to his disciples in Matthew chapter 28 was a teach command. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we are to be a teaching church, a teaching people. But we can only do that because of Jesus' very final words in Matthew 28. And remember, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We do not do this alone or in our own strength. We do this with Jesus, who by his holy life-giving spirit is with us always. We come now to pray for schools and colleges, for teachers and students, and also for churches, for ministers and those who teach others to obey the commands of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, at the start of the academic year, we pray for all those involved in the education system, for university lecturers, for teachers and those training to teach others. We pray that they may follow the example of Christ with patience, diligence and authority. We pray for children and young adults embarking on fresh challenges, especially for those who feel vulnerable, apprehensive or uncertain. We pray for those who did not get the exam results they had expected or hoped for and are now having to consider a different future from what they had planned. We ask that you will offer them your comfort and your guidance. Lord Jesus, you set us an example of how your church should teach and support each other. Be with all ministers who have recently moved and those congregations welcoming new ministers. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who teach or preach, ministers, preachers and worship leaders. Finally, we pray that each one of us may continue to learn of you, to study your word through the scriptures and be open to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. We bring these prayers in the name of Jesus, our teacher, our saviour, our Lord and King. Amen. Of the world I 
Oh, 